Hey, have you ever wanted to be a dwarf in space? Deep Rock Galactic, a game lovingly developed by Ghost Ship, takes you and up to four friends, if you have those, into hostile alien bug territory on a scorched planet called Hoxie's 4, where your job is, you know, get mining, you peasant freak. Play one to four unique little guys. Now, each dwarf is equipped with their own little arsenals. The engineer is a strategic dwarf, able to place sentry guns as well as place platforms to reach weird or other strange places on the map utilizing pretty light weapons for the primary and packing the heat as secondaries. I mean, this guy's secondary is a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. But the gunner hits the hardest. Equipped with all the heaviest weaponry the dwarves can make, I'm talking heavy revolver, auto cannon, minigun, cluster grenades that always end up hitting teammates. God damn it, man, stop accidentally throwing them. You know who you are. Gunner has a versatile zipline launcher and a throwable shield generator as their support items which really come in handy the more dwarves on deck. Being able to protect the crew when needed and carry large items up vertically is needed by the dwarves. Now the scout will not be using your cringe ass zipline because they have a grappling hook as well as a flare gun which is pretty vital on longer missions but grappling hook you know. Fling around, get up to high places, fall 50 feet and break both of your legs which would ultimately tear your dwarf family apart, yada yada. Equipped with lighter weapons than the rest suited with rifles of the sort, but a cool boomerang throwable. Last but not least is the Driller. The Driller has succumbed to the whispers that leave the dirt, his sanity is questionable at times, uh, digging is all he really knows. Equipped with elemental weaponry and some tech-like secondaries, the Driller can control a lot of what's happening on the battlefield. And uh, his support tool, yeah, it's it's a bit it's a big drill. It's uh, it can drill, it can drill. And I haven't even mentioned how almost every piece of the dwarf is upgradable, with different options like overclocks to allow a bunch of entirely unique ways of using the equipment. This one makes my bullets explode when I reload. Now all this weaponry needs to be used on something, which is where your enemies come in. The main enemies you will be fighting most of the time are the Glyphids. You know, you have small guys, big guys, your average Joes, your armored Joes, your bladed Joes, wizards, weird gross gassy ones, spitters, uh, and these exploded guys. One of them is huge, by the way, and can sometimes explode gold everywhere. And who doesn't like gold? Now, Glyphids aren't the only wildlife that you have to worry about on Hoxies. Macteras are flying variation enemies, able to spit from afar or spread goo, or just want a big ol' hug. Uh, na 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 do na uh... They're like, they're like flying jellyfish, and these big guys just float around all dumb and make them. Rival tech may also come and attack you from unknown assailants. Not to mention even the flora is out to kill you. So why would you ever go to this planet? Simple. We're rich. Hoxie's is filled to the brim with valuable mineral and material deposits. And Deep Rock pays me, and maybe you, the big bucks to go down there and complete missions. Now missions vary. You got your heavy collection, bringing alien eggs or mining up these weird blue crystals. You got simple collection like mining or refining a rich material called Morkite down in the caverns. You can go hunt huge glyphid boss enemies to really put it to them. That rival tech that may attack you, blow up one of their big weird triangles and steal its data. Repair some mini mules. Or do the god awful escort duty mission. I do not like the escort mission. Did I mention you have robot friends? Molly is your personal big mule that comes on collection missions and follows you around so you can deposit easier. And on solo missions, you have a little guy named Bosco who will do an insane amount of heavy lifting. Now, each mission has three variables on how it can ultimately be changed up. First, you have mutators and anomalies. These can change it from only spawning Mactera, having limited oxygen you need to constantly refill, or a perpetual unkillable ghost that takes the form of a bolt detonator and will instantly kill you if you get too close. Anomalies are beneficial mutators that make a job easier, which include double XP, more gold veins, and even low gravity. 
Your second variable are your biomes, currently 11 of them with an incredible range from sandblasted corridors to crystalline caverns. Each biome has a different landscape, materials, and even special enemies. Some can be radioactive or weird sand swimming sharks, like from that one movie. You know, it's all the same when you have 7.62 if I'm being honest. Your final variable is random events that can occur while you are in a mission, and you know, small or large meteorites alike will fall and crash into Hoxies, which you have to crack open and take what's within. Fight special gem-like infected glyphids for research, fight weird rock infected glyphids for research. All of this means that no matter what mission you do, it'll always be a unique experience, without a doubt. Now that we're nearing the end of the video and if you still haven't just dropped everything and immediately got to mining, let's speed run through some cool things about the game. Crazy customization. Make your dwarf look stupid or cool. Stream of content. They still update this shit. Drink at a bar. Farting? Tip jar robot. He does a little dance. Hit guy at a bar. He flings around. Dance. Kick barrel. Tap glass. Kick barrel. Piss off your boss. Kick barrel. Get the barrel kicking achievement and lose your mind. Kick barrel. Anyway.